geometric sequence and series. Last time remember we did arithmetic. I'll compare them in just a moment. We're going to do two things. I'm going to give you an overview and review the explicit and recursive formulas for geometric sequences, just like we did for arithmetic ones. And then I'm going to go through adding them up for series, both infinite and finite. Okay, so first let me give you an example of what a geometric sequence looks like. Geometri geometric sequences um, have a common multiple. So let me learn an example of. In this example, 4, 8, 16, 32, how are you getting from one to the next? You are multiplying by two. So the next one, for example, would be 64. And the next one would be 128. This differs from the arithmetic sequence we did last time, remember where it was like 1, 3, 5, 7, dot, 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 we were adding a number or subtracting a number. In this case, we are multiplying by a number or um, dividing by a number. Okay, so let me give you another example of that. 10, 5, 2.5, 1.25, dot, dot, dot. Okay, in this case, you are multiplying by a number again. You can either think of it as divided by two, or more typically, you think of it as multiplying by one half. So five is half of ten. Two and a half is half of five. One point two five is half of two point five, and then if I want to do half of one point two five, I get point six two five, etc. This dip, this difference here, this half in this case, is called the common ratio, and it's. And like the other one is a common difference. This is a common ratio, and that's written as R, R for ratio. A general sequence, geometric sequence, will look like, rather than just one of the specifics, will look like if you have some sequence, A sub N, it is A1. The next one you get by multiplying by A1 by R. So you go A1 times R, A1 times R squared, etc r cubed, r to the fourth, until you get to the last one, which is a1 times r, n to the minus one. And that means that a, so some general ips of n of some term, is simply the first term times r to the n minus one. Make sure you write that down. That is the explicit formula for a geometric sequence. So I'm going to make sure you got that written down. And then I'm going to write the ones for the examples I gave. I'm going to start with the one that I have right at the top here. In this case, A1, this is just, this is a specific example. A1 is 10 and R is a half. Therefore, the explicit formula is simply A to the N, sometimes written A to K as well, is A1, oops, R to the N minus one, which is 10 times one half to the N minus one. Make sure you put the half in parentheses, otherwise it looks like it's 10 times a half to the n minus one. It is a half to the n minus one, expo exponentials first, times 10. Okay, let me do the other example I had before. So make sure you got that written down as an example. Okay, the other example I had, and I'm gonna write the explicit formula up here, a one r to the n minus one. That's the explicit formula. I'm gonna leave that up there. And put this up there, we'll leave that up there as well until we get to the next part. Okay, so let me give you the other example. I'm going to start with 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. That's the one I wrote up first. In this case, A1 is 4 and R is 2. Therefore, the explicit formula is A to the N equals 4 times 2 to the N minus 1. If I had a slightly different series, like negative 8, 16, negative 32, this time I'm multiplying by negative 2. Still the same number every time, so it's still a geometric sequence. This is now 
da, 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 is a n equals four, and then I put negative two to the n minus one. Again, this is why I make sure you put a parentheses around this, because otherwise it looks like either four minus two to the n minus one, or more problematically, it looks like four times minus two to the n minus one. You'll do the two to the n minus one first, and then put the negative sign in the front, and that's not what we want either. If you do it in the calculator, make sure it looks like that. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple examples to put in. I'm gonna start with, uh, just to give you some practice on your whiteboards or paper or whatever you're doing on. Five, negative 10, 20, negative 40, dot, dot, dot. I want you to write the explicit formula for that. So pause the video here and do that. Okay, we're back. So from here, I want you to find R first. That is negative two again, times negative two, times negative two, et cetera, times negative two. So this is, and A1 is five, R is negative two. So the explicit formula is A to the N equals five times negative two to the N minus one. Okay, well, I already got that. Let me just show you how you use this. Let's say I wanted to put, um, find the fourth term. Remember, this is the first term, that's the second, that's the third, that's the fourth. I know the fourth term is negative 40, but I can use this explicit formula to find the fourth term. So a to the four equals five times negative two to the four minus one or third power. This is negative eight. So this is negative 40, which I got right there. And I could find this, let's say I wanted to find the seventh term. Okay, a little big numbers here, but one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's try the seventh term is five times negative two to the seven minus one, which is six. Uh, two to the sixth is 64. It's positive again, because it's negative to the sixth. So it'd be positive 64 times eight, I'm sorry, times five. And that's 320. There we go, that's 320. I can also see that by just continuing this path right here. That would be, next one would be 80, the next one would be negative 160, and the next one would be 320, there we go. That would be five, six, the seventh term, 320. This is the way you want to generally use it, because obviously if I'm finding the seventh term, that wasn't very hard. But if I'm finding the 50th term, this would be really painful. So this is the best way to do it. Anyway, that's the explicit, um, the explicit formula for geometric sequences. Now we're going to do the recursive one, just like we had a recursive one for arithmetic. For that one, we'll just do it again like we think about it the way you actually think about it, which is the equation is simply right up here, actually, a to the n equals a to the n minus one times r. And you have to just have something to start with, a equals blah. That's the recursive uh, formula. So I'll do an example of that with the same thing, just to show you it to you. We'll do four, eight, 16, 32 again. We know r is two. Um, the, the, remember the explicit formula for this was a n equals four times two to the n minus one, like that. The recursive formula is, so this is explicit, the recursive formula is a one, you have to give it, it's four, you need to do more start. And then the next term, a to the n equals the previous one times r, which in this case is two. So it just means you take the previous one and multiply by two. This is four to start with, next one is four times two, then eight times two, then 16 times two, et cetera. Again, how you would think about it generally. Okay, I want you to do the same thing for the other one we did. 10, five, 2.5, 1.25, dot, dot, dot. Okay, what I want you to do again, pause the video and give me the recursive formula for that. Okay, you're back. Let me write the explicit first. This is recursive, oops. Explicit will just be a to the n equals a one, which is 10 in this case times r, which was a half to the n minus one. That's the explicit. The recursive would be a one is 10, and then every next term is the previous one times one half. So 10 times a half is five, five times a half is two and a half, times a half is 1.25, etc. Okay, a couple more examples I'll do. Let me erase all of this. I'm gonna have you do these. Uh, first thing I want you to do is write the first, the first five terms of, I'm gonna give you a bunch of formulas. Let's start with the first one, which is A1 is five and R is three. Okay, pause.
pause that and give me the first five terms of this geometric sequence. Okay, you're back. First one is five, obviously, it's right there. Then I multiply by three, so the next one is 15, then by three, 45, then by three, it's getting ugly quick. What is that, 135 times three, yeah, 405, 125, there we go. Dot, dot, dot. Hopefully you got those and I didn't make a mistake, which is also possible, I think I didn't. Okay, uh, let me give you another one. Again, first five terms of this one. A to the n equals negative five, A to the n minus one, and A one equals negative six. So again, the nth term is negative five times the previous one, and the first term is negative six. This is a recursive formula. Okay, go ahead and try that one. Pause the video. Okay, bring it back. Now, so write the first term, it's negative six. The next one is negative five times that, which is 30. Then five times that, negative five times that, which is negative 150. Negative five times that, which is negative, is positive 750. And finally, negative five times that, yeah, was that 5150, I think? That doesn't look right. 750 times five, zero, five, two, 3750. Oops, my bad. Negative. Notice what the negative sign does for the, uh, the R value as well. It makes it alternate the signs, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative like that. Okay, let's try one more. I'm not finding the first five terms anymore. I'm going to erase that part. I want you to find the a, let's see, the eighth term, a to the eight, if a1 is 40,000 and r is 0.1. So find the eighth term. I would suggest doing it by the formula, not by the, um, just writing out the whole thing, but I'll do both. Pause there, do that problem. Okay, now you're back. So A1 is 40,000. So my equation is A to the N equals 40,000 times 0.1 to the eight minus one or seven. Okay, that'll put 0.1 to the seven here. That's a really small number. It'll move the decimal point seven points over. So 40,000 will become three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, point oh four. Hopefully that's right. I'll write this out just to show you. 40,000 is the first term. Then 4,000 times point one, times point one again is 400. Then 40, then four, then point four, oops, point four. Then point oh four, and then point oh oh four. This is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh term, I messed up, it looks like. 4,444, 4, 4, 4, 4. oops, I was wrong. Point one to the seven, I must have moved it along. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm moving too many places. Here we go, point oh four. I moved it eight places instead of seven, which was a mistake. Okay, uh, we're now going to move on to doing series. So erase all that. Okay, this just means we're adding them up. We're still gonna use these over here, so I'll leave that there. Um, so now, take our, I'll take a sequence, for example, three plus six plus 12 plus 24 plus dot 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 plus 3072. Um, this is a geometric sequence. You can tell it's geometric because it multiplies by two. Three times two is six, times two is 12, times two is 24, etc. until I get to 3072. Here's another example, one plus a half, plus a quarter, plus an eighth, plus blah, blah, blah. This is a, just like with the arithmetic ones, this is a finite series. This one is an infinite series. This one ends in 3072, this one doesn't end. Um, in the arithmetic case, remember, when you tried to sum these up, you could always sum up a finite one, um, but you could never sum up, sum up an infinite one. In geometric series, you can actually sum up an infinite series. I'm gonna show you how you do that. But we're gonna start with the finite one first, the equation. And I'll add that to my equation just over here when I'm finished. So if I wanna find the sum from one, oops, one to n of a sequence, a geometric sequence, it is 
a1 plus a1 times r plus a1 times r squared plus dot 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 plus a1 r to the n minus 1. This is a finite one, so it ends. This is the same thing, same thing I wrote up before when I was writing the sequence, except now I'm just adding them up. The equation for that is, I'm not going to derive this, by the way, but I, um, I, you can look it up if you want. I sometimes derive it when I'm doing these in person, but I'm not going to spend the time to do it now. It's a1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Quite a confusing formula. Let me just go through it. This just says, take the first term, in parentheses, 1 minus the ratio, the common ratio, to the nth power, however many terms you had, and then divide the whole thing by 1 minus r. Let me give an example how this works. I'm going to do it with the first sequence we had, I think, which was 4, 8, 16, 32. I'm just going to make a simple example with just four numbers. We're going to add them up. So this is the sequence we had before, except I had dot, dot, dot before. This is a finite series. And actually, let me write them over here. So sum uh, is a1, 1 minus r to the n, over 1 minus r. This is finite. OK, so I can actually just add these numbers to see what this is. This is 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 16 is 28, plus 32 is 28 plus 32 is 60. So this is 60. Um, I can just add them up and see that, but I'm going to show you how the formula works, because if we have a large number of these, we don't want to add them up by hand. Um, so what this says is that I can find the sum by taking a1, which is 4, so I know this is a b, by the way, check that later, uh, 1 minus r, r is 2, we knew that, done this several times already, n is the number of terms. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, number of terms. So that's 4, 2 to the 4th, all over 1 minus 2. That really doesn't look like it's going to be 80, but I'll show you it is. 4, 2 to the 4th is 16, so this is 1 minus 16, and the bottom is negative 1. Flip this over, that makes it negative 4 times, because that's just over for divide by negative 1, times negative 15 or 60. There we go, the same thing. Oops, we knew this was 60. I don't know why I read 80 there. My bad, again. Okay, so they're both 60. Okay, now we're going to go and do another one. Just to give you another example, I'm going to do the... Uh, let's do one other one we did before. I'll do the 10, 5, 2 and a half, 1 .25 one. Leave that stuff up. So 10, 5, 2.5, 1.25. I'm just do this four. This is going to be a bit messier because there's fractions. So remember, we can add these up. This is a series, so I'll take those commas as a sequence and add them up. And I get 15, 17 and a half, 18.75, looks like. Okay, 18.75. So now let's do the sum using the equation. A1 is 10. R is a half to the n. I have four terms again. Half to the fourth all over 1 minus a half. Again, in no way does that look like that's going to be that, but we'll do it. 10 times 1 minus 1 fourth to the fourth, which is 1 sixteenth, all over 1 half. At least you can see it's positive this time. That's a good sign. Uh, 10 times 1 minus 1 minus 1 sixteenth is 15 sixteenths. And then we're going to Flip this and multiply. So multiply by 2 over 1. Uh, this becomes, that cancels that, that becomes 8. And we get 150 over 8, which is 118.75. Exactly what we had before. Okay, so that's how it works. I'm going to give you a simpler one to do just to try a few of these yourselves. So I'm erase this. Again, just up the equation. So I want you to find the sum of this sequence. 1, 2, wow, 4, 8, 16. Okay, try it with the equation. I know you can just add those numbers up. Pause it there. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to add them up first just so we get the right answer. That's 24 plus 7 or 31. Okay, so we should get 31. So let's use the equation. 
a1 is 1, r is again 2, we have 5 terms in this case, and we're going to divide by 1 minus r, which is again 2. This is 2 to the 5th, which is 32, so this is negative 31 over negative 1, or 31. 1 minus 32 is not negative 31, and we get the same answer. Okay, um, that's for a finite sequence. We're now going to do an infinite one. So I'm going to have this to the side here, so I'm going to erase all of this up here. So now it's infinite, so it just goes dot 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 forever, and this is infinity. So this is infinite now. I'm just even just going to start with this equation. First of all, if it's if r is bigger than one, um, then this will just become this will be infinitely growing, and you won't be able to do it. Similarly, if r is uh, less than negative one, the same thing will happen. This this will just be something that's like negative five. By your time of here, you're at twenty five. Then you're up to r to the whatever a thousand. It'll just blow up, and you won't actually be able to do it. So the only time this works is if r is less than 1 and greater than uh, negative 1. In other words, that's to be, two, that's to be a fraction. So like for a half, r can be a half, or you know, 5 sevenths, or 2 thirds, or negative 2 thirds, something like that. It cannot be 2, or 5, or 7, or negative 7, or negative 5. Um, obviously it can be for the sequence, but you won't be able to add it up. It'll just go, it'll just blow up. So this will only work if the r is between 1 and negative 1. And another way to write that is the absolute value of r has to be less than 1, or just saying it's a fraction. If you do that, I'm going to start with this equation over here. This part right here goes to 0 if it gets really big, because you have a fraction, and you're doing it to it's an infinite power. So 1 half to the infinity. This is essentially zero. So if you do that, this goes away. And the equation simply becomes a1 over 1 minus r without this other part. A lot simpler. And this is just for finite sequences or series. And r, remember, has to be less than, perhaps if r has to be less than 1. So I'll write that over here now formula area, and that's infinite. Okay, and I'll do a bunch of problems now with that. Keep this over here, my little formula area. Okay, so let me do an example. Give me the one I think I gave you up front, which is 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus dot dot dot. Goes on infinitely. And this it seems strange that you can add up an infinite number of numbers and get a finite number, but you can. You can try this, by the way, in your calculator. Just add a half and a quarter and an eighth, a sixteenth, and thirty second. Keep going. You'll see it doesn't actually get larger. It, it approaches a number, which we're about to get. The number it approaches, so in this case, a1 is a half, and r is also a half, so that means it works. You can find the sum. So now I'm going to use the sum formula I have down here equals one-half over one minus one-half, or one-half or one-half, which is one. In other words, it approaches one. This is one, which I think is a little odd, but it is true. And you said you can try to start adding them up, and you'll see that's the case. OK, let's try another one. And then I'll have you do a couple. One plus one-third plus one-ninth plus dot, 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 forever again. Again, it's getting smaller. R is less than 1, so it should be a value. And again, you can add those up manually with a calculator, and you'll get that value. Let's we'll see what it's approaching. But I'm just going to use the equation over here. A1 is 1. R is, in this case, 1 third. I'm multiplying by a third each time. So it's 1 over 2 thirds, or 3 halves total. OK, I'm going to have you guys try a couple now. Again, of the infinite type. Um, let's try two uh, plus a half plus an eighth plus dot dot dot. Uh, again, it's shrinking. 
So it should have this finite value. So add them up, and I'll pause there and try it. Okay, if you're back, the sum is simply a1, which is 2, over r, which is a quarter, 1 minus a quarter, or 2 divided by 3 quarters, flip and multiply, 2 times 4 thirds, or 8 thirds. There we go. Okay, we'll try one more. I'm going to write it in a sequence style. Or sorry, a summation style. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 6 times 2 thirds to the n. Okay, let's try that. Um, pause there and try to do it. And then we'll come back. Okay, if you're back, um, I'm going to write out the first couple terms, otherwise it's really hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to write this out first. N to the 0, 2 thirds of the 0 is 1, so this is just 6. Then I'm going to put 1 in, and I get 2 thirds times 6. I'm just going to write it like this. It seems strange. But, and then I'm going to do 6, and I'm going to put in 2, 2 thirds squared, plus dot, dot, dot. So what's happening as I go across these, I am multiplying by 2 thirds each time. And that's what you can see right here as well. There's your r. 2 thirds. Okay, so now let's find the sum. It's a1, which is 6. There's a1, by the way. There's r. Uh, it is, um, again, a1, which is 6, over 1 minus 2 thirds, or 6 over 1 third. Flip and multiply. That is 18. Again, you can check this by adding this up and putting it in your calculator and just summing them up. You'll find it approaches 18. Okay, that's it. Again, what we came up with, as I got on right here on the left, we had these geometric sequences, which means they go up by a common ratio. That's what R is. And these. Um, if you do that, the explicit formula is simply a sub n is a 1, the first term, times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. That's every term in it. If you want to recursively, it's a 1 equals the number it is, the first number. And a n, the next term, is simply the previous term times the common ratio. That's the recursive formula. For the series, we have two equations, one for finite series, which is a1 times in parentheses 1 minus r to the n, all over 1 minus r. Or we have an infinite one, which only works if the common ratio is less than 1 or greater than negative 1. In other words, it has to be a fraction between 1 and negative 1 and 1. In that case, the sum is simply a1 over 1 minus r. Okay, in terms of homework, for college algebra, we will do homework 27. For algebra 2, we will do homework, I think it's 18 at this point. Thank you. Until next time.